I'm so smiley. Overly confident, the way to go into everything that might be permanent. Hi everyone, I'm Jess Chia, and this is almost every way to fill and style your eyebrows. When it comes to filling your brows, there are a ton of different techniques to choose from. I tried 17 different methods, some of which really surprised me. Others were bizarre to say the least. Ew. Before we start, let's set some ground rules. We only looked at methods with instantaneous results. That means no oral or topical supplements because we wanted to see what would work immediately. That said, let's dive in. First up, brow stamps. Brow stamps are exactly what they sound like little pieces of foam shaped like brows that you can dip into a pressed powder and stamp right onto your face. The toughest part of the process was just picking the ones that felt like they were the right size for my face. This is like where you need a friend to be like, does this look good? Ah, that was kind of close. That's just weird. Unlike other brow methods, which take painstaking amount of time, these were fast. I simply made sure that they were fully covered in the brow powder and then pressed it to my face. Ultimately, these were a little too big, but they were the closest I could find. Here's what I thought my brows would look like. Here's what they actually look like. I really wish I could get a set of brow stamps that was custom fit to my brows because it was so fast. Even if they fit perfectly, it's still a challenge to get the placement just right. Traditional brow powder. The goal of this method is fuller looking brows that look pretty natural, nothing dramatic. This kit comes with tweezers. You don't have to tweeze first, that's up to you, but if you want your brows to look really sharp, it's a good idea. It's always best to start with your lighter shade and then build up to your darker shade. It's more forgiving and it looks much more natural to have multi-dimensional color. Makeup artists we've talked to recommend starting at the arch of the brow. If you start at the front, there's a danger you could create a really harsh effect. This brow powder comes with pomade. Most of them don't, but it's a nice compliment to fix your hairs in place with a pomade if you have it. Kind of smooth these brow hairs. I just used my finger to apply it and I was done. I can honestly say that I would recommend this to most people I know. Partially because it's really easy to do and partially because it gives your brows a defined look without being over the top. Brow stencils. Brow stencils are something I had seen floating around but I'd never tried so I was super excited to get my hands on them. The idea with brow stencils is that they have cutouts in the shape of ideal brows so you can simply hold them up to your face and fill them in with powder. Sounds easy. Most brow stencil packets offer different style and size options. So I'm gonna try this medium arch here. Honestly, I think I made this look harder than it is. It's not that hard to hold it up to your face, but it is hard to hold it up to your face and fill in simultaneously. So you'll have to figure out your own method. I did my best here. On my first try, I made a rookie mistake. I didn't hold the stencil tight enough to my face and ended up with two eyebrow tails. Oh, it wasn't a great look. I think these are a great option for people who don't have any brow hair, aka any limitations on which stencil they can use, and they can play around. For people with a lot of brows already, it's gonna be pretty tricky. Brow crayon. Initially, I was so skeptical of this product. I thought the crayon was way too thick and it was gonna give me really drawn in looking brows. It, it doesn't look like it would be very good at doing detail, but we'll see. One of the convenient things about this is that you don't need to use a brush. You can just go ahead and color in your brow. It's really fast, or I'm just really impatient now. I really love the finished look and I was surprised at how well it kind of defined my brows. I thought they were gonna look super thick and chunky, but they didn't at all. This was fast. It gave my brows great definition. I would totally use it again. No, I actually, can I keep it? I would love to keep this. Yeah. Instant eyebrow extensions. I actually had no idea that this product existed and it was a little creepy. This product is basically short hair-like fibers suspended in a clear adhesive substance. <laughs> nice and hairy. Ah! <laughs> Because this was so sticky, I had no choice but to pick up globs of it at a time. Now my brow looks like it's shower drainy. This product also dried super fast and it left my brows feeling like hard and crunchy. Next up, mascara. If you ever run out of brow gel or just can't find it, using mascara can be a great substitute. I've done this in a pinch. It definitely gave me more definition. Wasn't exactly what I was looking for, but it works if you have nothing else. The bristles on a mascara brush aren't quite as fine as they would be on a brow product. You just need to use a very, very light hand to brush your brows in an upward direction. You're probably not going to get as defined of a look, but again, if you're in a pinch, 
it's a great option. So the trick is you have to find a dry mascara, so a volumizing mascara would probably be a good bet. Just like with any brow gel, you'll still probably want to use a defining product also, but if you just wanna brush up your brows and get them to stay in place, this is an option. I'm like, why don't I use this every day? It doesn't it look really nice? I think this mascara in particular, this is not what I used. Colored brows. More now than ever, makeup is so experimental. Anything goes. This is so bright. And blue brows are par for the course. I'm gonna give it a try, I've never tried it. There are a plethora of colored brow products on the market, but here I'm using a blue mascara. It's easy to take your brows too seriously, and I get it, good brows matter. But it's fun to experiment it really brought out a different side of my personality. Initially, I used a really light hand because I thought, okay, I want this to be super subtle. But if you're going for blue brows, just go for blue brows. <laughs> it's a little cookie monster, I see that. To you, blue brows might seem a little bit silly, but it's not about how the brows look, it's about how they make you feel. DIY eyebrow extensions. So. Legend has it that if you chop up fake lashes, you can make them into fake brows. Seems like a very bad use of expensive lashes, but if it looks great, it could be worth it. You can find fake eyelashes at any local superstore, drugstore, or beauty supply store. They're everywhere. Grab a pair of scissors, separate the hairs from the band by trimming as close as you can to the curved edge. You're gonna dip the tip of each of these little hairs in eyelash glue. Here's the difficult part. You need to make sure that each hair lies in the same direction as your natural hair. Even though it's super simple, it takes a while. You're going to need the patience to do this for every single brow hair. I already hate this. I hate this. I didn't have the patience to fill in my full brow, so I just decided to focus on the ends where my brows are a little shorter than I'd like. I was so frustrated by the time I finished with how long it was taking that I didn't even appreciate the fact that it actually looked good. It looks natural. It's a pain in the butt. I didn't like it, but if you have the patience, you could have the most natural looking brows on the block. Next up, microblading. Can't very well talk about filling in brows without talking about microblading. It's a popular service, but it's semi-permanent, so it's not for everyone. We sent a volunteer to the eyebrow doctor, Perrette Ava, in New York to learn about the process firsthand. Microblading is a tattooing technique where a small pen-like tool made of several really tiny needles is used to add semi-permanent pigment to the skin. Despite the popularity of microblading, it's still a serious process. You're at a risk of all of the things you'd face when getting a regular tattoo, as well as short-term or long-term reactions to pigment ingredients. There aren't many restrictions on who can offer this service, so make sure you research your practitioner thoroughly. Microblading is a commitment, but if you're willing to shell out, it lasts the longest of any of the methods, anywhere from three to six months before you need a touch up. Hairspray. So hairspray, I've been informed, is an excellent hack for if you don't have clear brow gel or you just don't wanna buy it, so. Let's check it out. If you wanna use hairspray, you need something to apply it with. I'm gonna use a clean spoolie brush, which you can get at any beauty supply store. I let the hairspray dry for a beat, so it got a little bit tacky. You actually need to blow on it, I don't know why I did that. Hairspray is meant to make your hair stick in place, and it's definitely gonna work for your brows. This is one you'd only wanna use when you have no other options. Water-resistant brow putty. What sets this apart from other brow fillers is that it's supposed to hold up well when it's exposed to moisture. We're talking sweat, water, humidity, etc. This product is great at resisting water because it's high in water-repelling waxes. But don't confuse this with being great for oily skin. You'd look to an entirely different set of ingredients to help with that. They're never perfectly even. This is what I do every morning. I just keep going back in. Just like with a regular brow powder, you'll use an angled liner brush to fill in your brow. The one I used here seemed to take a little bit longer to build up color, but that's not specific to all water-resistant brow products. I did dab water on my brows and do a smudge test, and it seemed to hold up pretty well. I really like this product. It's pretty standard. It's a little bit less densely pigmented than other brow powders that I've used. This is a little bit easier to build up to that level. I'm a little impatient. I like something that kind of gives me like a pow. 
most brow products you'll try will withstand a dip in the pool. You can't have your brows disappearing in the middle of the day. But if it makes you feel better to see the word water resistant on the label, then go for it. Next up, let's look at a clear brow gel. Clear brow gel is great for when you want a natural brow look, you don't want anything too done, but you don't want your brows to look like they're all askew. This is as goof proof as it gets. You just take the spoolie and pull it through your brows. It's going to darken your brows just a little bit because it's gonna give them sort of that wet looking effect. This brow gel gave me like a full fanned out looking brow. The best thing about clear brow gel is that it's super versatile. You can use it on its own for a super natural look, or you can use it after you fill in your brows for a dramatic but groomed effect. Brow stain. This is a brow stain that's supposed to last for three days, which is both impressive and slightly worrisome. The scary thing is I know the least what to do with this and I've been told it's a stain. So I'll just go for the gold, try to make my brows look as normal as possible. Overly confident, the way to go into everything that might be permanent. I was definitely skeptical of the brush applicator. It looked way too clumsy to give my brows an appearance that I'd actually want for an hour, much less a day. It actually worked super well. This stain had a moderate level of intensity. It wasn't the most dramatic, it wasn't the least. That I actually really liked. After five minutes, it's supposed to be waterproof, smudge-proof, and transfer-proof. After an hour, it's supposed to last for three days. So you have a generous window of time to fix any mistakes before you let it set. Now I just have to wait five minutes, let it dry, and it'll be set. I'm not sure how this is gonna work, but if it does, it would be amazing not to do my brows for a few days. We tried a smudge test after five minutes and it worked really well. Nothing came off on the cotton pad. Pretty good. I thought that the stain looked really good. I would have used it even if it didn't have long lasting effects, but because I liked it, I was totally into the idea of it lasting for days. This is a great product for someone who cares about their brows, but doesn't want to have to do them every morning. Gel Brow Builder. This gel brow builder is a waxy mousse designed to make your brow look thicker and fuller. This looks like mud that I'm about to put on my brows. It's so messy looking. You can use the tip of this applicator to add length and shape to your brow. Then you can use the broad side to fill in and fluff. It's not the best brow brush and it's not the best brow definer that I've ever used, but it is the best product that does both. Yeah, I would, I would wear these out if I had to. <laughs> it's not a ringing endorsement. If you're always in a hurry or you feel like you're kind of a novice when it comes to brow products, this could be a great option for you. Primer and Volumizer. This is a double-ended tool that uses a primer to thicken every brow hair, while the other end has a tinted cream to darken them. This was definitely one of the easier methods. All it took was a few swipes of the primer and a few swipes of the tinted cream. Because this brush has such a low profile, I had to get really close to my skin, and it ended up tinting my skin instead of coating the hairs. I just mirrors the side look completely different. If you like your brow shape, but you want them to look a little fuller, this is the perfect method for you. My brow shape needs a little help, so I won't be using this. Brow pomade. This is, ow. Okay, this is a brow pomade, and this happens to be one of my favorite brow pomades. This is an all-in-one product that acts as a brow primer and also provides color, sculpture, and shading. It's one of the most intense of all of the brow products. Not everyone's probably gonna be a fan of that, but I love it. I did feel that this shade was a little too dark for me, and because the pomade is so intense, it's really noticeable. With this particular product, it's even more important to choose the right shade for your hair color. <laughs> I have a better in my head. That was cool, that was cool. Brow pomades are fantastic for a dramatic look, but maybe a little bit too much for daytime for a lot of people. Brow highlighter. You can use brow highlighter for multiple purposes, but I use it to create dimension on an already filled in brow. After I've filled in my brows with a brow pencil, pomade, or powder, I'll follow up by simply brushing this through my brows. It's great if you accidentally overfilled your brow and you need it to look a little less drawn in. I personally like brow highlighters that are a little bit more subtle. This was very gold, very fashion-y, but find what works for you. So the big question after trying all of these methods is, which ones did I like best? Every brow method has its own pros and cons. 
I really liked the Gel Brow Builder for speed. I was surprised by how much I liked the Brow Crayon for its efficiency and the Mascara for its clean, fluffy look. I will continue to be a fan of brow highlighters, found out that I love experimenting with colored brows, and I found the brow stain really impressive. So take what I've learned here and experiment. See how each method works for you, because in the end, whatever makes you feel confident and beautiful is what really matters.